So goal for today is very simple to learn a lot about genealogy. I don't know a lot about it. Um, a lot of my clients, when I'm cleaning out a house, whether I'm cleaning a hoard or I'm cleaning out, uh, just helping a senior downsize or helping any family, you know, just kind of go through their stuff. And by the time we're done, they want to know more about their family. And I myself in that way, you know, I, I got in everything. Most people know I got in this industry because my, I lost my dad, my stepdad, and both my grandfathers in a couple of years. And I had to sort through all their items and I sorted through all the stuff. Right. But I didn't know the stories. And I was a kid, I was 24 years old and now I'm, I'm going to be 45 next week. And you know, I'm starting to really want to know these things. And I've got my own children. I want to pass these stories on. And the reality of my business is um, a lot of times my clients are the last people to know the stories. And so I often find myself saying, man, you know, people say, well, don't throw that stuff away because we're going to need it because grandma was knew all the stories. And so we're, we're saving more boxes and more papers because no one knows the stories. Uh, and so I've been before the whole pandemic and I hope everybody's safe. I hope, I hope everybody's OK. Um, I went to this trade show called Roots Tech. I knew nothing about it. I rolled out to, it's a genealogy trade show. I didn't know anything about it. And I walk in there and it's like the biggest trade show I've ever been to. And it's all about genealogy. And it was fascinating. I mean, 20, 30, 40,000 people there. And they all work toward, I tell you, if you ever want to feel good about yourself, go to this Roots Tech because it's, it's all like really positive, nice people. And they've all watched hoarders. So I got like a thousand hugs. Uh, and then, then, and then the next day, the pandemic basically started. Um, so anyway, I learned a lot, and I met with people, the folks from uh, Legacy Tree, and I found out there was kind of, you know, I, I said, well, how do I help these people? And they're like, oh, we can do that for you. And I said, well, great, let's get let's get this information. So that being said, I want to learn as much as we can in the next hour. We got people's attention, and this is not meant to be a big commercial. We want to learn some things. Am I going to say something at the end? You better believe it. That's what I do. I, mean, I sell stuff, but. We want to help you learn as much as we can at the beginning. So we've got Jessica Howe, and that's I'm spelling it right. H O W E. Is that right? Okay. Jessica, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, I'm Matt Paxton from Legacy List and from Hoarders. If you haven't watched my new show, please go PBS.org. You can watch it on demand. Might be on just see if it's on your PBS right now, but check it out. It's awesome. Uh, not as many dead cats as on Hoarders, but I promise you it's a really good show. Super positive. I think we need positive right now. All right, Jessica, you're here with us. You are a genealogist. Tell us what that means. I do family history research. Um, my area of expertise is actually Southern research, um, but our team um, has a wide variety of different researchers from all over the world. Um, I'm part of the DNA research team, so I dominantly focus on uh, Southern research, um, DNA research, historical DNA research. We help a lot of adoptees find and uh, identify their biological parents, stuff like that. So it's a wide gamut um, depending on, you know, we have clients that are novices and are just starting and they don't really know where to begin to people that have been doing this for 40 years. So we have um, a lot of team members that can can help a lot of different people. Um, tonight's uh, goal is to to get people who are just starting, who are kind of curious about genealogy yes. and, and learning about their family history and where they need to begin and uh, to answer some questions. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh, we're getting a lot of cool stuff in here. All right, Lana, my next door neighbor is watching this. Hey, how are you? Her, <laughs> well, her mom is my next door neighbor. I love it. What's up, Lana? All right. Oh, congrats. You got married, by the way. I had no idea. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I'm reading all the, I'm reading notes. I'm reading things. All right. So you're kind of, I mean, you're, I, I said, give me your best person and they, they, she wasn't available. So they got me you. So let's see. That's a joke, everybody. Okay. Why do, I guess people, you know, what are the different reasons people get interested? What are they looking, what are they looking for? That's really what I'm asking here. When they, when they come to you guys, what are they looking for? It's kind of basically, um, I got interested because my grandparents didn't really talk about any of their family history. Um, mm -hmm. My grandparents grew up during the depression and had a lot of experiences that they just really didn't want to relive. So they didn't talk about it a lot. And a lot of that history was lost. Um, we had a lot of family heirlooms, but we had no idea what any of it meant. All right, so, let me stop. Let me stop you right there. That is my biggest thing, man. I get so many families where they're like, oh, you know, this is my grandpa's clock. I'm like, great. Tell me about your grandpa. 
Like, I, mean, I never know. Yep. All Where is he from? I don't know. You know, yep. and so they don't know as much. And so sometimes either the items create concern or confusion, or they keep them because it might possibly mean something, or uh, they know all this stuff. And a lot of times I feel like the stories are really amazing and probably not true. And so I never know how to do it. So that was one thing I wanted to get into. But let's, um, if somebody really wants, if somebody wants to get started, like how do you get started? What do you do? Um, my, my first recommendation would be start with yourself. Um, regardless of what you know or you don't know about your family, you know you. So start with you and you can go to your local library. Um, you can go to websites like MyHeritage, um, Ancestry, Family Search. Um, the LDS Church has a website called FamilySearch.org. Mm -hmm. It's a free website and you can do a lot of research there for free. Um, you can always hire a genealogist if you get to a point where um, you have more questions than you're getting answers for. Uh, but start with what you know and then build out from there. All right. I got a, I got a question we got to show on here. One of my good friends, um, Miss Joanne, says she is adopted. That comes up a lot. It does. Right? Uh, and there was a whole, there were whole classes about it, Rutex, that blew my mind. Yeah. Um, talk about that. What, when people are adopted, they will get a DNA test or do something else, right. and they want to know it. So if they're adopted, what, is, what are their options here? Well, we, we usually recommend that you take a DNA test first. Um, you have a couple of different options. Um, we usually recommend that clients test at multiple different websites. Um, so MyHeritage, 23andMe, Ancestry, Family Tree DNA are usually the main four that we recommend. So test there. Um, and then if you have any non-identifying information about your family, then pull whatever information that you can together and start with research there. Look at your closest DNA matches. Contact them. Don't be shy. Um, reach out to anybody that you can. Be honest and ask questions. If they um, feel uncomfortable, that's totally normal. But give them some time to open up and just explain, you know, that you're looking for your family. You don't necessarily want to interrupt their life. You want to know about where you come from because you have a story to tell. So you need to be able to find information to be able to give to your children and your family members. So it's pretty common. It's very common. Yeah. Okay. That's I just want to make sure we're clear on that. Yeah. Um, some of the researchers on my team deal with okay. every single day. All right, uh, Jessica, your dad is on, and he's very proud. That he's oh, proud. I love you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I love that. Okay, so there's a lot of questions coming in. We're going to try to save some of those for the end. For those of you that just found us, yes, I posted the wrong link. I just found that out. I am sorry. If you're on my fan page, you now know this. Uh, this will be available in full tomorrow morning. You'll be able to watch the whole thing. Okay, and all the questions that I'm asking right now are actually going to be in a blog post that I'll post tonight. Yes. Well. Um, I guess what do you you kind of touched on this? What do you need? Well, actually, I'll ask a question. Side note, it's not in our questions, but like a lot of this stuff comes from LDS. It comes from the Mormon faith and from the Mormon Church. And I want to the Roots Tech is in Salt Lake City. This is not just for people that are Mormon, correct? I mean, you can no, be anything. No, I am not Mormon. Yeah. Um, there are uh, tons and thousands and thousands of people that are interested in their family history. You don't have to be Mormon to be interested or to have access to records. Um, you can. The Mormon Church uh, has dominantly done a lot of collection just because of their faith, um, and. They're a great resource. The Family History Library is located in Salt Lake City. And if you ever have an opportunity to visit there, you can go there in person for free. And, and the, they have lovely people there that will help you pull records. Um, but you don't have to contact um, Family Search or the LDS Church in any way. Um, you can go to Ancestry and you can um, purchase a subscription to their website. And they have a lot of access to website or to um, records there. Um, my heritage is constantly growing their collection. Um, find my past. If you have family members who happen to be from Europe, um, that's a great place to start. Um, it just kind of depends what you're looking for and, um, you know, what your main goal is. Okay. I'm writing notes down as well. I've got a couple really good questions. Sure. Um, 
Deborah Morrison, you're going to have to ask that question later. How do you research African-Americans born into slavery? Uh, you'll be shocked how much information there actually is. Uh, very good question. Yeah. Um, I've learned a lot you know, with my new show, Legacy List. Um, a lot of our families, you know, the show is premised on, if you don't know what it is, the show is premised on us going into people's houses and finding a couple items and finding history uh, in these houses. And a lot of times the history is actually the heritage of the family. And they want to know things. And we found some fascinating fascinating things through genealogy and so again i i knew nothing about this a year ago and it's really just piqued my interest and i feel like as we're as some of us have more time i mean i don't want to downplay what's going on in the world but some of us do have time to finally tackle the things we want to tackle and this is when i'm seeing a lot of people have uh, asked about it all right cindy sloan that's a great question i wish i could tag these gosh cindy sloan come back and ask that question a little bit okay um does the LDS have much online? I guess you can answer that right now. Um, yes, they have um, millions of records online. Um, you can go to uh, familysearch.org and you can sign up for a free account and you have access to millions of records. Um, they have a an option on their website in the search option for research wiki. And that, if you type that in, you type in a town or a country, they will be able to provide you with different um, links to collections that they have available or give you some advice on where to find those or links to other paying websites that might have that collection. All right, I'm gonna keep going with our, our regular questions and we'll get into the Q&A in a minute. By the way, uh, if you notice on, if you can read this as a viewer, uh, Legacy Tree Genealogies, is a member is actually posting on this on the side here. Um, I believe that's probably Amber answering that. I'm not sure, but um, please check it out. I mean, what she's an she's answering a lot of the questions you guys have with resources and websites and things like that. And we'll also have that on my website, my website, uh, mylegacylist.com. That will be on. Where is that? Oh my gosh. Um, Oh, this is what watch this guys this is so exciting additional tips and special offers from legacy tree genealogists will be available at mylegacylist.com that's so exciting mylegacylist.com okay sorry i'm really excited about this software all right let's get back into the questions here we know how you got started you know what a point what do people actually need uh to get started i think there's a there's kind of a misconception that you need all this money and you need all these tools and you need a ton of you know a ton and what if i don't have any pictures or bill sweeney who's on here he posted um, what if I just have a bunch of pictures that have no names? What, how do I get started? What do you, what do you really need? Um, you need a piece of paper and any immediate family information that you might have. Like I said, you can start with yourself. Um, census records are usually the, the best way for people to get far, um, get farther back in their family history. But there's a caveat to that. Um, the United States censuses are held for privacy reasons. Um, so the 1950 census is not available. The 1940 census back until the census began. What? Yep, in 1790, um, those are all available online um, through MyHeritage and Ancestry and, and Family Search. Um, the uh, 1890 census was mostly burnt in the 1930s uh, in a fire. But other than that, if your family was born prior to uh, 1940, you should be able to find them in census records. That's why it's so important for everyone to please, please, please fill out your census records because people like me will end up needing them years down the road. Well, and as a guy that did a lot of work in public health and mental health with hoarding, please They're, fill that damn thing out yes. because money, money for programs to get people help come through yep. that census. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, gosh, there's so many good things here. And again, keep following Legacy Tree Genealogists. If you're not following them, it's Legacy Tree Genealogists. You can get them on, on Twitter, on uh, Facebook, and on Instagram. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's go on. I think tips to avoid. This is probably my favorite. Um, uh, tips to avoid. So and I'm I gonna, let me let me stop you real quick. Everybody, she's going to give you a few uh a few answers here and they will be available on a blog post on mylegacylist.com in about an hour as soon as we hang up it'll be available so tips to avoid when you start tips to avoid when you start um like i said before start small 
Um, avoid overlooking your objectives. So start with a, you know, what is your goal? Do you want to find your grandparents? Do you want to find your great grandparents? Do you want to know, you know, where they were in 1925? Um, states had state censuses and you can look for tax records and stuff like that, but find an objective for yourself and start small and build from there. Don't, I know a lot of people get very excited because websites like Ancestry have um, shaky leaf hints that will pull up as they're building their family trees online. Those are wonderful, wonderful resources, but they're not always valid. Um, the algorithm that those websites use don't always uh, work to pull the correct record for your ancestors. So just because they've hinted to something doesn't necessarily mean that it's for your ancestors specifically. You need to analyze that that record to make sure it's for you. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, All right, keep going. We got uh, good to go. First one you, yeah, keep going on the tips, right, special perfect. tips. Um, next one. Don't believe everything you see online or that's that my you favorite one. Yeah. It's okay. So a lot of times we have questions like, um, I want to be able to find my Cherokee princess ancestor because I have my, you know, my grandparents said that I was of Native American heritage because I have dark skin. Um, nine times out of 10, that's not going to be accurate. Um, I encourage you to do a DNA test to see if you have any markers for Native American. If you do, that's wonderful. Um, but Native American and First Nations uh, ancestry is very under um, collected because of tribal beliefs. So you may have it and it may not show up, but take a DNA test. We'll be happy to pull those records for you, but there's going to be some avenues that you're going to want to to look for. Um, as far as African-American research, I know that a, a lady earlier had, had yeah. questions about that. Um, I know that a lot of African-Americans are very concerned because they feel like once they get into um, the 1800s that records just aren't going to be available for their family members. And that's not necessarily true. More records are becoming um, um, available online. Um, we can pull census records. We will do our best to be able to find any records for we, you. Yeah, we had a family on uh, on Legacy List this year, and she a had, huh? A lady from Selma. No, a different lady. Actually, she was Miss Lambert. She had, she was the first African American woman to go to Harvard Business School. Oh, wow. And she grew up in a real small town in Virginia, a tiny little country town, I mean, dirt floor. And she was, you know, aware of the slave uh, owner that was the paternal person in the family somewhere. But when we had an expert go in and help us, and um, they actually went to like the local small courthouse and were able to get some real records, and we were able to find out that the person she, the, the leaf she'd been going, you know, the branch she'd been going down was totally wrong, and it was a much closer one. And and so it opened up a whole new line of, uh, you know, options for her. And I think for her it was just. She believed what her family until she saw on a piece of paper from her family from 50 years ago. And it, it just wasn't accurate. It wasn't that it was misleading. It just the person they gather it didn't have as many, you know, tools to their to their hands. Right. Exactly. In, in my personal family history, um, we were uh, always told that our great great grandparents were these individuals. Um, when I started to do our family history, I found that that information was inaccurate um, and we ended up having to correct um, other family members, family trees, because they had just pulled records from other people's family trees that they had found online or inaccurate information. Um, so it's always important when you're doing your research to be able to back up what you're finding with additional documentation. Right. Uh, we're half an hour, yeah, 25 minutes in. I want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to keep going through thank these questions. So we, so we leave space, uh, but I just want to acknowledge, man, it's it's a Wednesday night. You know, you got stuff to do. There's, you know, there's reruns of Legacy List and Hoarders on. I'm sure you'd probably rather watch that. Uh, we really appreciate you guys giving us our time, and we want to make sure this is helping everybody. But I'm going to tell you, the questions that are coming in, man, when this is over, go back and look at them. There's some awesome stuff and resources where people are connecting. Uh, if you need you guys keep dating and you get married, you got to say something about the wedding for me. But anyway, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's keep going on the tips. You said avoid overlooking objective. Don't uh, believe everything you see online. Uh, we talked about local resources. Uh, touch on that one real quick. 
Yep. So um, contact your local courthouse to, or just visit your local courthouse. Every courthouse has an archives. Um, it may not be well organized or it may be very vast, but it take the opportunity to visit your local courthouse, um, go to the probate office and ask where your archives are. And there'll be, there's very lovely people there that will be able to guide you on possibly what you're looking for. I know my local courthouse doesn't just have, um, you know, tax records. They have old newspapers from the 1800s. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's, they have, um, uh, my, one of my cousins pulled the, um, I think it was like the 1918 voter registration when women were finally able to vote. So they have a copy of when their, their grandmother was finally able to vote. Um, major, major events that you would never think of um, could be locked inside of the family history. Best, you know, best, gift, yeah, best gift I've ever given in my entire life was a lady that I, the lady from Selma that was on legacy list with us. And we were able to get records uh, newspaper records or actually voting registration of her family being able to vote for the African-American family being able to vote for the first time after Selma. This and I mean, oh, she, yeah. I mean, the release, the the joy, the happiness, the sorrow, all of it. I mean, it was amazing to experience. And it was from a piece of paper that we found. Yeah. All right. So we reach out to family. We've talked about that. Utilize local resources. Talk to your family. How far, you know, how far back? How do you talk to your family about this? What do you say? Um, ask questions, ask very like detailed questions is um, start with your eldest ancestor. So if you have a, an aunt, a great aunt or uncle, a grandparent, great grandparent, if you're fortunate enough to be able to talk to them, ask them about their childhood. You know, what did they live? What did their parents do for a living? Um, we ended up, my grandmother didn't speak about her family history, but um, once she developed Alzheimer's, she started to give a little bit more information. And that was really invaluable when helping uh, build out her family tree because we ended up identifying family members that she didn't speak of before in, in events in her life that really changed the course of her life throughout. throughout. We, we find deathbed is, a believe it or not, a good place to talk about this. A lot of my clients are like close to, you know, they're often going to die, you know, within, I mean, we're all going to die, but they're, they're often, you know, over 65, you know, old. And um, <laughs> no, they, but like I found like with my grand, my grandfather was a lockbox. He didn't tell anything because uh, he was in the war and he was in World War II and they just, you didn't talk about it. It was not cool to talk about it. And he never discussed anything about the war. And then I met a guy that he served with at his funeral. And that guy told me a lot. And yeah. if I hadn't written that stuff down, I'd have known nothing, man. He never told his wife, my grandma. He didn't tell anybody anything because he was told you keep your mouth shut. You don't you don't talk about that stuff. And so when oftentimes late in life is when the stories come out and you need to document them. I was this is not in our notes, but I'm telling you, I keep uh, my little every every cell phone has a recording device. Man, I've got files in my and I make sure you're sending them to yourself on email. Like just if you start talking to your grandma, like hit record and get it down on, on recorded. Yeah. Yeah, a, a wonderful example of that. Um, my one of my um, cousins it interviewed my grandfather um, later on in life, uh, several months before he passed away. And my grandfather was stationed at Iwo Jima, and but he never spoke about his service to anybody. Um, but later on in life, he felt comfortable enough to be able to give a little bit more detail. And um, we ended up finding out that he was there when they raised the flag in Iwo Jima, and he got to see the gentleman do that. And that was so special to my father to be able to know that his dad was standing there when that happened. So definitely record that um, anytime you're talking to your family, even if you think that it's, you know, you guys talking over a cup of coffee, um, record whatever you can, take notes because later on, that's gonna be invaluable for you to do your family history research. Uh, Bill Sweeney just commented, oh my God, I'm over 65 old, I'm gonna die soon. <laughs> Um, let me tell you something, Bill Sweeney, He's getting Bill, older. Trust Bill, me. Bill yeah. Sweeney, Bill Sweeney should have died 10 years ago. This dude has beat <laughs> cancer. He's beat everything, man. He's a, he's incredible. So you ain't going anywhere, buddy. Oh, I love it. And I owe him about five phone calls. All right, let's keep going here. Um, I think, I mean, I, I think one thing we just say, this is about family, right? Like this is meant to bring joy. And I see a lot of people just take you seriously and they get so into it and it becomes their job and it's no longer joy. What's your advice there? Um, 
my advice is this is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. So you're always going to have times where you're going to get frustrated and you're not going to find information or someone's not going to want to talk or, you know, maybe you have a grandmother that you would like to have DNA tested, but she's just not comfortable doing that. That's okay. Take some time, walk away. Um, if you hit a brick wall, um, that's okay. That that's going to happen in every single person's research. Regardless. But what if you're what if you're perfect? Because a lot of people are perfect. Nobody and... is ever perfect. Trust me. I find the imperfections. That is my job. Um, but you will absolutely uh, come to a point where you're going to need um, help, and you're going to have to have a brick wall situation. So when I say brick wall, what I mean is you're not finding any information about your family, um, the records. In my case, my family is Southern, so on both sides. Um, so a lot of those records were destroyed during the Civil War. It doesn't mean just because you don't have the major, um, the major resources you would normally think of, census records, you know, birth records, vital records, a lot of that stuff just didn't exist or isn't available or was destroyed. You have other avenues that you can explore. So if you ever have any questions, um, the wonderful option that Legacy Tree has is something called a genealogist on demand. So I know that we're gonna talk a little bit more about yeah. that, um, but that might be an opportunity if you hit a brick wall, contact us and we can do a one-on-one -on -one um, genealogist virtual um, consultation and kind of give you some steps and some ideas on other resources you could pull. We have a comment from Paula Johnson. Uh, we all know the only perfect person is Matt Paxton. And I agree. Totally agree. She's a smart <laughs> woman. Thanks, Paula. Um, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of my friends on here, which I love. Um, actually, I love this one. Boy, this is the truth right here. I live in Utah. Genealogy is a religion. Man, it, I've never... It, it, I've never seen so much passion about anything. And I, and I love in my, you know, I travel around the country and I get to see a lot of people every day and I don't care what you do as long as you love it. Right. And I, and I will say that was an awesome, awesome event to go to just to see the excitement and the passion. I mean, there were 10,000 people in a class yeah. about like how to use a specific tool online. Like it, it blew my mind and these people would meet afterwards and do things. So if you're looking for something that has meaning and passion, I mean, this is pretty exciting. Um, I do so this for I, work. Like this is this is yeah, a you career. get paid for, you get paid for this, right? I do, yeah, I do. Awesome. But I also my husband makes fun of me all the time because he's like, "Are you serious?" Like I'm sitting on the couch watching television. He's like, "Are you seriously doing genealogy?" I'm like, "This is just what I do. I've done this since I was 16 years old. For me, it is a passion, and it's what I I love to be able to give someone a family story." Um, yes, join your local genealogy society. Absolutely. There is well, I, I, I only put this up there to look at her uh, her picture. She's riding. Over <laughs> very, very pretty. Love it. Amazing. I have so many questions. We're good. Yeah, but there we go. All right, but is she right? Should you go to the Absolutely. Uh, yeah, there's gonna be one in every single town. Um, most of the towns that you uh, live in are gonna have a historic society. Um, they're going to have a family history center that you might be able to access records from um, the family history library. If you decide that you don't want to subscribe to like Ancestry, um, you can go to your local library and they might be able to pull records for you. Okay. All right. Custom tailored tours asked, uh, how do you organize your information right from the beginning? Uh, man, I could talk for an hour about that. Uh, Jessica, what do, what's your opinion on that? Um, we... There are varying different like degrees of, of um, retention. Mine is color coding things in file folders and digitally scanning everything. So I have two copies. I have a hard copy of all of my documents and I have a digital copy that is on a separate hard drive to make sure in case something happens that um, those records aren't lost. Okay, this is an interesting one to me. Is it worth it? to have several family trees on multiple sites or is it uh, better to stick to one on one site? No, I recommend that you build a family tree on one site and then transfer that family tree. Um, usually you can upload it through something called a GEDCOM. Um, so you can go to websites like MyHeritage and then you can download the, the family tree and then you can transfer it over to different websites. The more people that you can spread your accurate family tree to, 
um, the, the better chances you're going to be able to get to find somebody that has like the family Bible. I did that exact same thing. My dad's um, great, great, great grandparents um, migrated from South Carolina. We hardly knew anything about them. I found them in records in South Alabama, but I didn't know anything about their life prior to that. Um, I'd posted a family tree online and uh, a, con a cousin of mine contacted me and she said, hey, I have their family Bible. Um, it's and, and it has all of my ancestors' birth dates, their death dates, their marriages, all of this invaluable information. So please, yes, spread your family tree far and wide, um, post it online, go to forums. Um, there's different websites. There are Facebook groups that you can join depending on what region you're interested in. People will ask questions, they'll post pictures. It's, it's a huge world of genealogy. Uh, Allison Bell wants to know, can have you joined yet? Can you have you been? Uh, this lady's looking for her husband or son, I think. Oh, can yeah. Bell have you joined? I love that. All right, I've got a question. Um, I mean, what if like, this one lady asked it earlier and I'm curious and we're jumping in and out of questions, but she said, uh, you know, she found out and I've seen this a couple times on here that um, somebody finds out they get pretty deep and they find out that their, their dad was not actually their dad. Right. And not their bio dad, excuse me. And their bio lot and they, and their the father, the person that raised them has passed away. And then the biological person has passed away. That's a serious brick wall. Is there any hope at all in that situation? That is not a brick wall. Um, that no. is where we come in um, or you come in and you take a DNA test. So DNA um, uses websites like Ancestry or 23andMe, um, MyHeritage. They use something called autosomal DNA. So they, when you spit into your little tube or you do the mouth swab um, and you send it off, the companies will test your autosomal DNA, which tests your mother's side of the family and your father's side. So you get approximately 50% of your DNA from each of your parents to make 100% of you. And that uh, DNA is a combination of all of your ancestors. So if you take a DNA test based on how close your DNA matches are, we can help you determine who your biological parents are. Okay. I got this is what I tell people when, when I'm cleaning up a house that, you know, you've been in a house 50 years. And they, and it's going to take longer than a weekend to clear it out. You know, you've been there 50 years and people start to give me all these excuses and they say, wow, we're, we're stuck. We can't move. And I say, no, man, a brick wall is just a reason to stop. It's a reason to quit. Right. Awesome. You're telling me there's not a lot of, you know, if someone's reading this right now, they think it's a brick wall. It's probably not. It's probably not. No, I deal with, um, and, and we focus on cases every single day where clients um, find out accidentally when they take a DNA test because their sister gave them a, you know, an yeah. ancestry mm -hmm. DNA test for Christmas and they're only half siblings and they don't know what to do with that information. If you contact someone, a, a professional genealogist or a genetic genealogist like myself can take that information and we can help find your biological family for you. All right. I love this stuff. All right, we're going to keep moving. Um, you, you touched on, you know, hire a professional. I think that keeps coming up here. Um, yeah. If you're stuck, look, people hire me because they can't, they've gone as far as they can go on their own. Like, don't be afraid to hire a professional. It's not as crazy expensive as you think. We'll get into that in a few minutes. Um, what's your like biggest surprise you've ever seen? Like biggest, like, you know. Um, every single project that we work on has its own individual surprises. Um, but I did work on a project not too long ago where the client was born in uh, Taiwan to an African-American uh, soldier and a Taiwanese woman. And he was trying to find his biological family. And he had been searching for four years and he wasn't having any luck. and he took a DNA test and he had a father match, a father son match on a website. And his dad had taken a DNA test several years ago because yeah. one of his half sisters was really interested in doing their family history. And um, we contacted them and, and explained the situation. And um, it was a little bit of a shock, of course, but the family welcomed him into open arms and he flew mm -hmm. last year, last summer to. Um, to America and met all of his siblings and his dad for the first time. That's awesome. 
it, it really is. Like, how cool is my job that I get that to do? That is very cool. cool. Yeah. That is very cool. cool. I love it. All right. Here's a lady just wrote, I had a brick wall for 10 years and just broke through it recently with a new German index on family search. Yes. All right. So every day. So that's exciting. Like this is not, you know, I just love that. Like, you know, as things change, I had a friend that they kept telling him he was going to die of cancer and then this stuff would be invented. This new medical stuff would be invented and they'd be like, oh, no, you're good, man. You got another three years. And the guy lived for 10 more years. Right. He was supposed to die like the next day. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, technology advances. I think is really, really cool. Yeah, all right. It is. Uh, all right. This is my favorite. I'm really excited. I've been waiting like for a week on this. I sent you some stuff, right? Because I want to show how we're going to kind of, we're going to get to the questions in a minute, guys. But I sent you a picture. Let me pull this picture up. Yes. I sent you this picture right here. And let me, I'm going to, um, I'm going to hide you and me. All right. This is my family, right? This is the family. I believe that uh, the story tells me 1890s. And this is the Paxtons that came to Oklahoma. But I was told Oklahoma, and the picture says Oklahoma, but I don't know if Oklahoma was even a state by then. Uh, and I just asked you, I said, gosh, I want to know more. And you were going to tell me, oh, here she comes. Okay. You were going to tell me, what what can you tell me about my family? I gave okay. you a couple names and a picture. Yes. Okay. So um, you gave me the um, name of your grandfather. Yep. And you gave us the picture. Yep. So uh, we took a few hours of time to do a little bit of research for preparation for this call. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm kind of excited because um, we weren't able to specifically narrow down um, where in the um, Jester cave system that picture was taken yeah. because that cave system has 63 entrances. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Okay. Yes, but based on the clothing for the time period that was yeah. taken around the 1890s. Okay. Mangum, okay. the town was Mangum, the town, the, kind of close, but anyway. Keep right. Yeah. right, okay. Um, the information that we were able to pull on your family, and I'm going to maximize my screen here because we took some notes. Well, we can't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think you'll be able to see this, no. but, um, so your, uh, your grandfather was Russell Paxson. Yeah. Russell J. Yeah, man. Yep. Okay. His dad, uh, Frank Temple Paxson was born in September of 1888 in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Um, he was one of 10 children and his parents were William Paxson and Annie Shields. Um, the interesting about interesting thing about Frank's family is um, Texas didn't require birth records, um, but we searched for your family in the 1890 Oklahoma Territory Census because Oklahoma was still a territory. It wasn't a state. So we didn't find them, but what we did find is a first person account of Wheeler Paxton, Frank's brother, explaining how the family migrated from Texas in December of 1888 to Oklahoma. And if you'll pull up the picture of the um, the dugout that I sent you. Oh, yeah, this is so cool. That is what their house looked like when they came to Oklahoma. They had that's not their house. That's just a sample. Correct. That's just a yeah. sample. Yep. Um, but that's an example of what those houses mm -hmm. look like. They just built it in the dirt in the, the side of a mountain. Um, and they raised 10 children there. Yeah, I, I've seen, I've been back to Mangum and I've seen the house that my grandmother grew up in. It was, it was 12 brothers and sisters and it was, wasn't as nice as the one we're looking at on the screen right now. And I mean, that's just how they grew up and they grew up in the Dust Bowl and they worked hard and they were just really, really hard working people. And it's where I got my work ethic from. And that my grand, my great grandfather, Frank Temple, my, my youngest son is named Temple after him. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I love this. Now, what was this? You showed, you sent me this. Okay. So this is interesting because in um, Wheeler's information, he stated that his father, William, uh, was a Union soldier in the Civil War. So we pulled records and um, the Union pension records aren't available right now because of COVID-19. So we weren't mm -hmm. able to pull his service record, but 
he was, let me pull this up real quick. Um, he was a, a soldier in the um, Potomac Home Brigade in Maryland. Potomac, yeah. Yep, and um, that brigade served during Gettysburg and other huge um, different battles. Um, he was listed as being an Appomattox at the discharge of the war, um, which is interesting. Um, I would really recommend if an hour from where I live right now. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy that like your family ended up being from that area. Um, they lived there, yeah. but it, it's kind of crazy how first full circle it went. Um, but the information that you see on that document may not mean anything to you, but it does show that his widow um, had a pension. Um, she had applied for a, a widower's pension. To, to gain a little bit of money yeah. from him working in the Civil War. Um, and then uh, those are invaluable records because a lot of times those will give um, names of family members, locations, got, yeah. all kinds of, of parents' names sometimes, uh, information like that. So um, I encourage you to, to, you know, pull that once the, the COVID-19 thing is, uh, is a little less... Uh, restrictive. The National Archives yeah. right now is closed and, and you just can't access those. If your family member was a, a Confederate soldier, a lot of that information can be found online, but Union yeah. soldier records are at the National Archives. Somebody just wrote, what do they call those houses in Oklahoma? I think in Oklahoma, those are called fancy houses. If you have <laughs> but a bunch. Get it. But a bunch. <laughs> and they're slap houses, right? Are they, what are they? Yeah. Or just dugouts. A lot of people dugouts. Call them dugouts. dugouts. Okay. Um, guys, this is awesome. I didn't realize how many people, there's so many questions coming in and I just wanted to kind of show, and, and I did, she did not send me this, but she sent me that picture about 10 minutes ago before we started this. I, um, I gave you very little, how many hours did you put into that? Three or four hours? Yeah. Okay. So three or four hours. Um, tell us real quick before we get into the questions, what are the types of things that, um, Legacy Tree can do? You guys have two types of products. What can you do to help families? We do. So we have a, we just began a genealogist on demand um, consultation service. So that is a hundred dollars. And if you contact us and you have a certain area of expertise that you would like someone to talk to you about, um, you could have just general questions or, you know, if you have someone that if your family member was from Europe or um, South America and you have specific questions, we can discuss those with you. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be able to do any real-time research for you during that time period, but we can give you different resources to get you on your way. Or um, we have a full project service where if you decide that you just need some help, um, we have different plans that start at um, 25 hours and that starts at $2,500. And that will give you 25 hours of research time with a professional genealogist. Now, that's a lot of money, but I think a lot of families. A lot of I, value for what Yeah, a lot of value. I get into this. I mean, the $100, that would have been about 200 bucks I would have paid to get all that. Two, 300 bucks I would have paid to get all the information from you guys. And that's yeah. money well spent, man. I mean, that would be getting me started, um, especially now when I have time on this. I think it's really, really cool. Um, I'm going to be posting all of this stuff on my legacy list. Uh, dot com or wait a minute my legacy list.com will have a link for both of those options for the 45 minute and for the hour uh, yeah. it also will have a summary of all the questions we went over and helpful hints where to get started um, a lot of that will still also be here on um let me put that in the i think we have a, a special giveaway too is that correct we do if you stick around for 10 more minutes we're going to have a giveaway we're going to give one person a free 45 minute consultation on-demand consultation. Uh, I'm putting the My Legacy List link on here. Um, let's get into the questions. Am I, uh, I've got a lot of questions. I've got someone that texted me a bunch of uh, sure. cool questions. Um, can you share any tips on researching ancestors who were indentured servants? Um, yeah, it kind of depends on what area you're researching. Um, there's a lot of information online. I can't necessarily, off the top of my head, specifically give you resources. But my recommendation would be to go to FamilySearch 
And I'm sure that they have a lot of different resources that you can pull from. Okay, so there's options but, out there. In my head right now, I'm sorry. But there's op there's options. She hasn't seen any of these questions yet, but yeah, there are and options out there. Good books. Okay. Um, a really good resource to try to find some information might be Google Books. So the website is books.google.com. And you can just type in indentured servitude um, or indentured servants. And, you know, if they were Irish or what area of the United States or world mm -hmm. that they were in, and it they'll give you thousands of books to look at for free. Okay. Okay. Uh, can we do more of these seminars? Well, of course. Absolutely. Yeah, this is cool. I actually really like it. Um, what is the best way to solve a roadblock with an ancestor or grandfather who was born out of wedlock and his paternity is not known? Two descendants have taken specific. Two descendants have taken DNA tests, mm -hmm. um, but still having some challenges. Okay, um, it depends on what the challenges are. Are the challenges that you're not getting any feedback from your DNA matches, or are you having challenges with identifying how those people are related to you? Um, that might be something that you need to um, contact us about a little bit and give us a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. um, you can answer in the, the comment section. Hopefully you yeah. can get back to your question. Uh, this is an interesting one. Is What about finding a grave? Is there options to find that kind of, I don't need you to, to know the website, but have you ever found out if there was ways to find things? Like yeah, that? there's actually a website called Find a Grave. There so, you go. Yeah, or billiongraves.com. Um, so find it's, a, it's a senior dating site, actually. It, it, is, it is. It's <laughs> super posh. Yeah. Um, but you, it's affiliated with Ancestry. And you can go to findagrave, all one word, dot com. Literally. Okay, findagrave.com. Literally, if you type it in, it will literally pull up a website, and you can type in someone's name to see if you can find them there or a certain cemetery that you think that they might be in. Okay. Uh, how do I find a family from Lithuania? Let's just broaden that. How do I find a family? There's a lot of you know, countries all around the world, and I think people in the States think, oh, I don't know how I would start. Are there resources for that? Yes. Um, family search is a really good one. Ancestry is a really good one. The main thing that you, if your family is from Europe or another country outside of the United States, or even in the United States, you have to think about what period of time that person was living because that will vastly um, differ in the amount of information or the location. So, um, you know, Romania was not always Romania and yeah. Poland wasn't always Poland. You need to find out, you know, what area um, they were living in and what time period, because a lot of those borders changed. And there are resources online that you can find all yeah. of that information. What what I'm hearing is there's resources everywhere, man. Like if you think it's a roadblock, it's probably not. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here, here's one. How can I find information about what a country, town, or area in Alabama slave ancestors migrated from in the late 1800s? Oh, interesting. Okay, so um, this is going to be a good question. Um, my recommendation would be if you are looking for slave ancestors, um, if they're African American, try to find somebody else um, in around the turn of the century with the same name that they're from, or with their with their same last name. If you have someone, if you're having a brick wall issue where you just don't have any information, DNA is going to be your best bet. So take a mm -hmm. DNA test, see what other African-American or um, Caucasian family members that are showing up, um, usually in the third to fourth cousin, cousin range, and um, contact them and see if they were located in Alabama. And then you can narrow it down from there. Okay, quick one. My grandfather was adopted. No one really knows much about his real family. Is there a way to find this? How do you get started in a situation like that? Um, same information as before. Yeah. So. Um, take a DNA test. Um, if, if your grandfather has any information about um, non-identifying information. So uh, if he lived in the state of New York, they just recently allowed adoptees to be able to have access to their original birth certificates. So check locally and see if you can get information about his adoption um, and pull whatever non-identifying information okay. you have. Non-identifying information is um, you know, regions of the U.S. that your family, your biological family was from. Um, they don't give specifics like names, dates of birth, anything like that, but they'll give you vague information like his parents were shoe salesmen or, you know, they had four children other than, you know, your ancestor, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of that stuff is really helpful. 
Okay. How do I find the ship manifest? My ancestors came over from Ireland. Um, it depends on what area. Uh, ancestry has ship manifests and find my past has uh, ship manifests from Ireland. And a lot of people from Ireland immigrated through Canada. So I would look through Canadian uh, ship manifests also. Okay. All right, believe it or not, man, we are running out of time. I'm gonna pick our question award winner. Yay. Um, oh man, it just went away. Oh, here it is. I'm gonna give it to, I think I'm gonna say Renette Oliver. Uh, I got a funny information about my what a country town or area in Alabama slave answers migrated from. She won a free 45 minute on demand uh, consultation with Legacy Tree genealogist. Uh, Renette, I will can I will contact you directly, so you'll be able to um, actually receive that. I've got a certificate for you. Renette, you'll right. probably talk to me because Alabama is where I live and it's one of my areas of expertise. So I look forward to talking that to you. Soon is exactly why I picked her because I was like she's probably going to get Jessica. Yeah. All right, what do you what do you want people to know before you know we got about 5 minutes left. What do you want people to know about like this whole thing? I mean there's a ton of people asking a lot of questions and this is really really cool and we will come back and do more of these. But what um Allison Bell asked me am I putting all these uh websites on my uh on my website? No. No, I'm not. Uh this will be on my Facebook page and I would encourage you the legacy yeah. tree and we yeah. have tons of information there. There's blog posts on there specifically. Yeah, there's a lot of good blogs. There's a lot of good blog posts. I went through a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, but I would a lot of these things are in the comments, and we're going to leave this this up on my fan page. Um, but I don't actually. This is really. I just wanted to get people to let people do it. I mean, I'm going to connect you if you want to hire a Legacy Tree. You can through our website, mylegacylist.com. Uh, we'll have links there for you. And, um, and if not, we'll connect you with, you know, you can find the connections here. I just want to encourage people to get started uh, yeah. in any project, whether it be downsizing, whether it be hoarding cleanup, whether it be exercising, like whatever, dude, like just go now for 15 minutes. Yep. Yeah. I mean, so what, what kind of advice, separate from that, what advice do you want to give people? Um, it literally is just get started. Um, I know that it can seem really intimidating because there's a lot of information out there and you don't really know where to get started. Start with yourself go online. Um, there are tons of different websites where you can build a free family tree to begin your research and go from there. Yeah. I mean, she said it, pad and a pencil, man. That's all you need. Pad and paper, you know, paper and pen and it's start asking questions. One of the, um, I saw someone I really liked, I don't know what it was, I said, you know, there's, there's lots of different um, ways to start the questions. My favorite icebreaker is how did you meet? I always ask, you know, a client when I see they're 90 years old, they've been married 50 years. I'm like, great. How'd you meet? Yep. And that is a, it's often different answers from both the husband and the wife <laughs> and they're hilarious. And it starts a humorous way to get into this. I always lead with humor. If you've watched me on TV, um, you know that I lead with humor and I lead with humor because life's really too serious most of the time. Yeah. And specifically, there's a lot of people here talking about, um, I do actually, I want to ask you that question again. If you are, if you're adopted, or you came from an orphanage, what's your best advice for that? Because that's that's popping up a lot. Um, the best advice is... More, motiv more motivational, I would think, is what I'm looking for there. Yeah, is um, just try to get as much information as you can. If you can pull, if you can access your adoption record, um, contact locally to be able to see if you can even have access to that. If you can't, that's okay. Um, take a DNA test and start from there. You can always... Um, contact people. I really, my main goal for tonight was to get people outside of their comfort zone. And I know that it can seem really intimidating and it can kind of seem scary especially for adoptees because they don't want to rock the boat and they don't want to upset yeah. anyone. Please don't feel like you are alone, that you're going to upset anyone's family. You have a right to know who you are. Do it. Take a DNA test and go from there. And what if you have no interest in learning any of this and your family is trying to force you to? What's your advice there? Lean in. I have an answer. Yeah. Lean in. It, and you might find something that's really, really cool and that you might pull uh, a pretty cool family story from. Okay. Hey, you guys, I really appreciate you doing this. I think it's super, super cool. I want to announce I am super excited. I'm casting for season two of Legacy List with Yay. Matt Paxton. 
I know. I'm stoked. And everybody wants to invite us into their home right now. Um, <laughs> please, please, please. If you've got a family member or someone uh, that you love or someone that you know that is currently downsizing or, or right sizing or making room, a lot of people are like a lot of moms are moving back into people's houses. <laughs> My mom's been staying with me some. It's been great. Um, uh, you know, downsizing is different. Uh, than it ever has. And that's really cool. And if you've got family members that are doing something with their stuff and they've got good stories, uh, we need them for the TV show. We need to film. Um, hey, Karen Shin from Canada. What's up, girl? Um, we need uh, we need people for the show and we need eight. We're going to film eight episodes this year. So if you've got anybody, please go to mylegacylist.com. If you go to mylegacylist.com, you'll be able to submit uh, any family members or friends for season two of, my, of Legacy List. Um, please let them know that you're submitting them. I had someone the other day get submitted, and they're like, "What are you talking about?" And their son, oh. son has, and their son was actually submitting them for orders, which I'm not <laughs> on anymore. And uh, and it was, I was like, "Nah, dude, this is Legacy List, different, totally different show." Sorry. And she had not told that anybody that awkward conversation after you hang up the phone. It was it was pretty funny. Uh, I gotta tell you, I got the best job in the world. I think Jessica would probably argue that she does. Hundred um, percent. Dude, I get paid to help people, and I think you do too. Yep. Which is yeah. really really cool. A, a great yeah. bunch of people, um, and this is what we're passionate about. So yeah. If you ever have any questions? Um, the all of the links are going to be on Matt's website, and yeah. um, give us a call. Yeah, thank you. Hey, people are asking about hoarders. Uh, I did film a couple episodes last year. They haven't aired yet. They're coming on soon. Um, the reason I left orders was I wanted to stay home with my kids and, uh, and I've loved it. It's been awesome. I don't regret it at all. Yeah. Um, but daddy's got to buy some stuff. So I might do one more episode. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I don't, I don't know what the future of TV looks like folks. I'll be honest. I don't know if orders will ever come back. It's going to be a really dangerous thing to film. Um, but I'm really excited about P my show on PBS, my legacy list. Yes. Uh, Ms. Blake, it is on PBS. You can watch it anywhere in the country right now or you go on PBS.org. It's a great positive show about finding history in, in, our, in our parents and grandparents' attics. It's really fun. It's really positive. Uh, I'm super proud of it. And we need families for the show. So go to my legacy list and I'll have a, give me about a half an hour. I'll post everything uh, from this conversation today and you'll be able to link to getting help from Legacy Tree. Jessica, you get the last words. I took all the words. You get the last words. Can you no, you're people? great. Thank you guys so much. This has Thank been you. so much fun. If you guys have any questions, just give us a call. Thanks so yeah. much. Thank you guys.